Hi, I'm Marcia from Coding Blonde and today we're talking about blockchain because it's such a mysterious topic but it's really a technology that will really disrupt a lot of different industries. So I've spoken to Michael who has recently got into the community here in Boulder and into the technology. It fascinates him and that interest and that energy is just contagious. So you can see my interview right now. Hi, Michael. How Hi. are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much for finding time to give me an interview and tell my audience about blockchain. Absolutely. So Michael is an inventor and he also runs uh, blockchain meetups here in Boulder. And he has been getting into the industry quite recently, but really passionately. So I wanted to ask him some questions today about blockchain from a uh, perspective of someone who got into it recently-ish, but has just gone down the rabbit hole. How would you explain blockchain to someone who is new to it? Someone who has no idea what it is. Right. What is blockchain? Yeah, I think one of the easiest ways to think about it is that it's the next evolution of the internet. Mm -hmm. So right now we have the internet of information. And with the internet of information, I can send you a picture and you could take that picture and make a million copies of it and send it to a billion people with pretty much no cost whatsoever. And uh, the next evolution of the internet will be enabled by blockchain technology and that is something that it has digital scarcity basically so people are probably familiar with Bitcoin and so if I send you one Bitcoin you can't make a copy of it and you can't send it to millions of other people. And so that's kind of like basically a high level idea of what's possible with it. And so that idea of digital scarcity, not being able to copy those things enables tons of other things. And so essentially what it is, is there is, you can imagine it like a database with information in it, but it's a network and each node in the network has a copy of the database. Mm -hmm. And so they all have the same copy of the database. And what's unique about that is that it provides a lot of security. So for instance, if the government wanted to shut it down for some reason, like they couldn't just go to one single point and say, you have to stop doing this. They would have to go to every node in the network and shut down that node. And then in like manner, if there was a hacker who was trying to attack it, mm -hmm. they would have to take over a majority of the nodes. And so that provides censorship resistance mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of security to the network. So another thing that's great about it is it enables peer-to-peer uh, -peer transactions uh -huh. without a third party. So basically right now, in a lot of the things that we do on the internet, there's companies that act as a trusted third party. And what this technology does is it basically replaces that company with a piece of software. So the protocol itself is where the trust is. Uh, that's like a pretty high level overview of it. And I mean, we could start getting down into the details, but it gets really complex really quickly. And so it's yeah. kind of like a high level. Yeah, thank you. Um, it does really get very, very detailed very quickly because yeah. I went to that hackathon and it was like, whoa, okay, how did we get from point A to point B? It's just like so many uh, details. But I love that the fact that it's databases that everybody has. So from what I understand, a node is let's say a computer, right? Yeah. Who stores that kind of database, right? Yep. So for example, if I have uh, a piece of it, then I'm a node. Yep. And then if you have it, then you're a node yep. as well. And we both have that database. Yep. And then if somebody is trying to hack it, they have to hack both of us at the same time, right? right. Yeah. Which makes it secure. Exactly. And so like if that's two of us, but if there's like a hundred of us or a thousand of us or a million of us spread throughout the, the globe, it's, uh, yeah, it just makes it a lot more challenging. You know, like what happened, um, well, I guess Equifax would be one example of like mm -hmm. a central database that got hacked and the like really sensitive information for half of Americans got exposed because it w it's, it's easier when there's one point of failure. Mm -hmm. But when it's something like this that's decentralized and distributed, it just makes it so much more robust in security. Fair enough. That's amazing. Yeah. And 
when it comes to the blockchain technology, whenever people hear that word, they immediately think of Bitcoin. Can you please explain what's the difference right. um, between Bitcoin and blockchain? So Bitcoin was the first blockchain. And uh, in 2008, there was a paper that came out by a person or a group of people. We don't know. We don't know who who is responsible for this um but they go by the name of satoshi nakamoto and the idea was for this new protocol that provides digital scarcity like we were talking about earlier so yeah bitcoin is the first application of it and so now there are a bunch of other projects that use the same underlying concept mm -hmm. to do different things so like bitcoin is really you know in the white paper it was uh, labeled as a peer-to-peer electronic electronic cash. Mm -hmm. And so now there are other things that are coming out like Ethereum, because from the Ethereum hackathon, that are designed to do a bunch of other things. And so like Ethereum is a smart contract blockchain. And so there are a lot more things that can be done with that as opposed to Bitcoin, which is optimized or I guess invented specifically for transactions, but they are trying to adapt it in ways so it can do these other things. But I guess that's the primary difference. Mm -hmm. So blockchain is the technology while Bitcoin was its first use. Yeah, basically. exactly. So like Bitcoin was the first blockchain. And yeah. now there are other blockchains mm -hmm. that do other things. And mm -hmm. some of them do the exact same thing, just like a little bit differently. Uh, I guess one of the big, one of the first altcoins, they call it, um, was a, something called Litecoin, where mm -hmm. it tweaked a couple of the characteristics of how it works. But it's essentially because Bitcoin is open source. And so it's essentially the exact same thing with just a couple of variables that are tweaked. So Bitcoin was the first ever blockchain used. What do you think of it? And why do you think is it, it's so volatile? Because it's always oh, up yeah. and down. Yeah. So I think it's important to distinguish Bitcoin blockchain and Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. I think Bitcoin blockchain is amazing. I think it's an invention that is going to radically transform society and the way that we live our lives. But in terms of the currency and its value fluctuating so much, I, there's a lot of reasons, I think, for that. And it's really hard to point to one specific reason. Like uh, right now we're coming out of a bear market. Or I don't know, really. Like it's, it's hard to tell what's happening. But, uh, you know, the price, it was nearly $20,000 for one Bitcoin. Right now, this morning, it was like $11,000 for one Bitcoin. And so it's hard to point at precisely like one thing for causing that to happen. There's, and it's like that in most financial markets, as far as I know. And so there's all of these factors that contribute. But I would say like one of the biggest ones is that a lot of the investment into Bitcoin is purely speculative. Like people mm -hmm. believe if I buy it now, at some point in the future, it will be worth more money and all have made money, which is great for me. And so when for, there's like a piece of news that could possibly be really bad for Bitcoin and and uh, prevent it from gaining that value, people might start selling it off. And so when people start selling it off, the price starts to go down and other people may see that and they may start to sell off and the price continues to go down. So it's like this positive feedback loop. And in like manner, if there's a piece of news that it looks beneficial for Bitcoin, people may start to buy. And again, the positive feedback, the price goes up, more people buy it, the price continues to go up. And I think one thing that could be helpful for it is if it was an integral part of something thing mm -hmm. and because um, right now it's not it's independent right yeah it's good for a couple of things one thing that it's good for is transferring large amounts of money so like if I wanted to give you a million dollars and I did it through the traditional financial system, it would take a really long time. There would be high fees with it. But if I were to send you a million dollars in Bitcoin, you could have it in 10 minutes mm -hmm. and the fees would be relatively low by comparison. And uh, like another possible use case is people who live in unstable countries that have uh, you know, like hyperinflation or their banking system isn't working very well, like they may get paid a thousand dollars equivalent in their currency and then a month later it may be worth five hundred dollars. And for them, they don't really have any secure sort store of value options. And so Bitcoin could possibly be a solution to that. Even right now, it's relatively like once it reaches the bottom, it kind of stays around that place but determining where the bottom is is obviously the challenge, so. Yeah, that's very, very interesting how it's just like 
Oof, all over the place. So we've spoken about blockchain as a technology and we've spoken about cryptocurrencies as one of the applications for this technology. What other applications are there? For there, there are a lot of other applications for this technology and that's one of the things that I'm most excited about. I think the first thing that I want to say is that it's important to realize that cryptocurrency is not the only application, but there are a lot of things that are going to be enabled by cryptocurrencies happening. So like for instance, if you're an immigrant to America and you've come here for a better life to work and make money, you're probably sending some of that back home. Mm -hmm. And right now with the traditional financial system, when you send that back home, you have to wait a really long time for your family members to get it, and it's really expensive for them to get it. But with blockchain technology, you know, once it scales to the point where the transaction fees are lower, it'll be like, how, right now, how it's efficient for sending large amounts of money, it'll be efficient for sending small amounts of money. So mm -hmm. they'll get the money right away with a small fee, and it'll just be a lot more frictionless. Some other applications are, like I was talking about, Equifax hack. Previously, before this technology, it was absolutely necessary to have third parties like Equifax maintain our credit scores because like if I had a bad credit score and I maintained my credit score and I wanted to use my credit for something, I would just change my credit score, like obviously mm. to make it look good. But now, since we have a trusted protocol that we can place that information on, and it can't be changed, then that that is a great use case for it. Because like right now, these companies, we are not their customers, we're their products. And with something like this, you know, they're profiting off of us right now, like selling our data when people make inquiries on our data. But with something like this, we could make that money and we could also eliminate those costs altogether. And so that's another application. Land registration in developing worlds, that's a huge problem. In 2010, the Haiti Earth quick uh, Red Cross raised like half a billion dollars but when they went to Haiti to start rebuilding things they ran into a lot of problems because they couldn't verify who owned the land oh, wow. and so it was super challenging for them to rebuild but if there were a global ledger of land registration then mm -hmm. it would be super easy and so like the really that's one of the things I'm most excited about this technology is that we're very lucky and fortunate to be living here in Boulder Colorado like there are billions upon billions of people who don't even have access to any financial services and on top of that all of the other things that can be enabled by this technology are really going to make the biggest difference for the people in the developing world that's amazing yeah that's amazing and it's wonderful to see how much potential it has for social impact yeah for developing countries it's it's amazing yeah it's great. And i mean technology spreads so quickly right like if i have a physical product i'm like oh here are these new solar cells that are going to help this developing world like okay, I have to ship them overseas and I have to deal with setting up all of this infrastructure, but like a lot of these people already have phones and some of them have smartphones. And so it will spread really quickly once these, once the network has scaled and the applications are released that really make mm -hmm. a big impact for these people. That's wonderful. Yeah. Really wonderful. And how did you get into the field? What attracted you to it? Yeah, I mean, so I, like many people, heard about Bitcoin. I don't even know when the first time I heard about Bitcoin was. Like, that's how much I disregarded it. But uh, I would say it's probably around 2014. In 2016, I went to this event called Boulder Startup Week. Mm -hmm. And there was a talk there that was curated by Kevin Owaki. Mm -hmm. It was called The Future in 2026. And uh, there was a couple of people that presented Piper Merriam from Ethereum, Zuko from Zcash. They made these awesome presentations that really helped me realize the potential that this technology had. And so I kind of started following it more from there. And then recently in June, I moved to Boulder and I just really took a deep dive into the community here. It's just unbelievable how great the blockchain community is. Everyone's so friendly and welcoming and like they want to help people learn about it and understand it. And so through that community, I've started to become, you know, I'm helping organize meetups and uh, just really want to make Colorado just a great place place for blockchain and so I think that's really what's driving my exploration into it right now. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's wonderful because it has so much potential and you never know where it's going to take you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's like everyone sees that and it's 
when you can when someone doesn't know about it and you can explain it in a way where like boom they have that light bulb and once you get that fundamental understanding like for me at least i'll start to see the world in a different way like i've never thought about third parties before like mm -hmm. in any of my interactions and now it's like every time i do something that involves a third party i just like think of all of the ways that this is going to be different in a you know in some time it's like i always used to wish that like i could be around at the beginning of the internet in a in a manner where like i could do something about it and this in my mind is just as big as the internet if not bigger yeah so it's yeah. a huge huge opportunity to make a difference yeah it's definitely going to disrupt a lot of industries yes and yeah it's exciting to be part of it yeah 100 percent. yeah well, thank you so, so much for sharing your knowledge with my audience. I'm sure they found it unbelievably like valuable and amazing. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed that video and that you understand the concept much better. Thank you, Michael, for sharing your insights and your passion with my audience. It's been incredible. There will be a lot of different blockchain related videos coming out this month. So make sure you subscribe to my channel not to miss them. Also to my Instagram account and to my newsletter. And all of them will be here on this playlist uh, using this uh, link over there. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below or in my Instagram. I would love to hear your feedback, ideas, and just answer your questions. If I can, I will try my best. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.